Radio, Raheem, with Eddie Hearn, the last man in the building, as always. We appreciate your uh, your stick to itness, and we will stick keep it short. Yes, is that yeah. a thing? It is. It, it only applies to you, though. Okay. Well, and like me, because I'm also the last I would guy like in the to building. Officially appreciate my own stick to itness. Yes. You. And you stuck to this card I did. <laughs> through yes. all the trials and tribulations, and of course. After you pick a new opponent, there will always be some type of uh, reaction from the audience. And you've been criticized here about Hellenius. So I'm asking not only the people who may have been in line before him, because Gerald Washington said today that he put his mm -hmm. name forward. And uh, how we got to Hellenius through the opponents that you may have chosen first up that couldn't get. So uh, is... Yeah, I mean, many different ways we got there firstly wanted someone that was ready and not mm. someone that was saying after the fight well i only had a week's notice and you know i came off the sofa for the fight helenius message where well, his lawyer messaged me on the way to his fight on saturday saying that we're about to have an eight rounder if we mm. win we want to fight next week and i know his people secondly someone that will move quickly won't mess you around doesn't have 86 different managers you know, different promotional companies, different contracts that they actually didn't know about. Um, to someone stylistically that was the right choice. Um, and Gerald Washington was definitely considered. He hasn't boxed for 18 months. He's coming off two defeats. I know he holds a, a win a few years ago over Robert Hellenius, but I feel like Hellenius was a good choice. And amongst the criticism, which it'll always be, was the general feeling of actually, in the circumstances, six days out, it's a good fight. And obviously... DAZN made the decision to remove it from pay-per-view, which is a big move for them. It's cost them a lot of money. But I think it's great for subscribers, and I think it's a great heavyweight card. So you're thinking that Hellenius is a better challenge on the night than Jerry Washington? Yes, absolutely. You know, I, I think you look at his last, has he lost his last two or three? Two. Two. Hasn't boxed for 18 months. And then Hellenius was the third out, the one, there was the last one that he won. Yeah, but Hellenius boxed on Saturday. He's just done a nine-week training camp. He's in, he's in shape. He's six foot eight, six foot nine. He can punch. You know, we all know that Washington is defensive and you'll see that on Saturday night against Chisora. Mm. Um, but, you know, I, I think we would have got unbelievable criticism for Washington. And we got some criticism for Hellenius. But like, you know, at the end of the day, any way you go, it's going to be criticism. But now, what about Hergovic, who is already on the card? It seems like you're able to deal with him. Why not pull him up, seeming to be the best challenge? Never mentioned. I mean, firstly, his team never wanted, I mean, never approached us about the fight for a number of reasons. Number one, he's had a 10-week camp for a southpaw. Number one, southpaw sparring for 10 weeks. I know the switch backwards is easier than the switch the other way. And that's why Dempsey McKean wasn't considered for AJ as well. Secondly, he has the mandatory position for the world heavyweight title. So his next fight is going to be, when Usyk fights Dubois, the day after, the winner will be called to fight Filip Hergovic for the world heavyweight title. Mm. So I don't think it was really even an option. And to be honest with you, because of that risk, I think they would have asked for a fortune, but we never spoke with them. Dempsey McKean, I think would have been a, a good choice, but is a southpaw. And AJ's not going to fight a southpaw on a week's notice. It just doesn't make sense. Manuel Char came in, he wanted several million. Uh, Andy Rees put something on Instagram, but there was no discussions. I was unbelievable. Some of the people we had replying for the, the <laughs> position. But, you know, you have to move quickly and you have to move with people you believe will sign the contract and get on the plane. Were any of those people who were coming after the fight considered? Uh, I mean, AJ basically said, I'll fight anyone. Mm. But you have to deliver him an offer. You have to deliver him the right fight for DAZN. We made the decision to take it off pay-per-view. Um, that limits the budget, quite frankly, of some people, and particularly like an Andy Ruiz or something like that. Um, are there anyone who we did speak? Yeah, we spoke to loads of people, but some guy, I mean, Ajit Cabello was a guy. By the way, before Dillian White signed the contract, which we didn't think he would, mm. Ajit Cabello and Robert Hellenius had both agreed terms to fight AJ on August the 19th. August 12th, sorry. So they ended up getting more money than they originally agreed, but Ajit Kabir wanted double what he agreed and he priced himself out. And Robert, and he, by the way, he wasn't in full training. So Hellenius was, 
and he was sensible, still expensive, but sensible enough to make sure we get the fight. I spoke to Joshua today, and something came up that uh, no one's really been talking about is that you know Dillian White has made multiple accusations mm -hmm. against Joshua, mm -hmm. saying everybody, he's a dope cheat. He has for years. And, and so now that he is in this position, uh, does this make this a little bit different? I know it's the third time around with Joshua, but the history with Dillian White, how long he's been asking for this rematch, and the accusations he's thrown over the fence to Joshua, now having been in this position, what is your reaction to that aspect of it? I mean, I will firstly say that Anthony Joshua is the most tested fighter in the history of boxing. Not of this era, of boxing. You know how many drug tests that guy has had? I mean, I'm talking about dozens per fight and dozens away from fights. Do you know what I mean? And the cleanest fighter on the planet, quite frankly. So there's always going to be accusations. Look, I think Dillian White, it shocked everybody. Me, them by all accounts, having spoke to some of the team. But they've got their own fight now and it's going to be a difficult one because there's no clear process. And this is one of the problems with the sport. Who does he answer to now to clear his name? Do you agree with Derek Chisora that this is down to the trainers, that the fighters have less? Yeah, yeah, I don't believe that a trainer, a fighter, sits at home on Google and Googles, how do I beat Anthony Joshua? Or how do I, you know, become faster? Or how, And then finds a substance and finds someone to supply it. You know, that's, not, that's impossible. So it's someone that the fighter is dealing with, who is in charge of their substances, who are in charge of the strength and conditioning or whatever it's going to be, a doctor that tells them, you know, I don't want to bore you too much, but there was a sprinter called Dwayne Chambers, right? A British sprinter, mm. lovely guy. And I used to work for a company that represented him. He would come into the office, like the nicest bloke you've ever seen, local guy, really world-class sprinter. He went to America to start training. Soon after, he tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. I said, I don't believe it. There's no way Dwayne would treat. Like he's the nicest kid, like he loves athletics, like no way. And he went into Victor Conti's camp and was exposed to people that made him cheat. Told him, this is what you do, this is how you do it. Everybody's doing it. You wanna be the best, this is what. So Derek's right, I, I, I think Derek is right. I don't believe the trainers necessarily because I don't think they're involved with supplements and diet, like all that kind of stuff. But mm. ultimately, and again, this isn't a Dillian White issue and we hope he's innocent, mm. but if that is in his body, someone's put it there. Him or someone has given it to him. Do you know what I mean? So, and I don't think the fight, I think the fighters are honest individuals in general. And I don't think they're looking to cheat like that. But maybe they're told to or, or they're told this is fine and, you know, whatever. But I want to, I'd like to get to the bottom of it because it's a, it's a strange one. Uh, taking your attention now, maybe a couple of weeks back, because, you know, I can only chase you up at Talk Sport, not always at your home when I want to speak to you. Uh, the biggest fight, at least this year in boxing, is obviously uh, Spence Crawford. Mm. And I know you were in the Crawford sweepstakes when that yeah. was a happening. Uh, what did you make, obviously, of Crawford's performance, but also uh, of how Spence turned up that night? Look, if we, we have to acknowledge the brilliance of Crawford. Now, I said in the fight, we don't know how to crash, we don't know how to torn retina, and we don't know how the weight cut is going to affect his performance. Mm. It all affected his performance. But Terence Crawford was amazing, right? Mm. So... You know, Terence Crawford is an unbelievable fighter. It actually pisses me off that Terence Crawford is not a superstar. Because I see him get up on that stage and rap to Mr. Carter. And I thought, you're a fucking cool, cool son of a gun. And then I listened, I watched the documentary about how his mum used to give pay people 10 bucks to fight him and try and beat him up. Yeah. And I'm like, how is this story not been, how am I only seeing this now? Right. This guy is a two-time, two-division, undisputed champion. One of the best fighters of our generation. And you know what? He could walk down the street in America, in New York, in LA. No one would have a clue who he is. His mom might be like the hidden gem of a trainer. She should be in, yeah, <laughs> in these guys' corner. At the end of the day, right? I mean, it's a story, isn't it? It's narrative. Yeah. That's compelling. Mm. Seeing that makes me want to follow the journey. Why mm. have we not seen this? 
you know, why why is Terence Crawford not been promoted in a way where he is an American superstar? Because he should be, because he has the ability to be. He's a good role model, you know. Mm. Yeah. Well, what do you put it down to? What, how? Bad promotion. And also he talks about, they told me I've got to leave Omaha, I've got to move to New York or LA and I'll be more in the public. Like, and he said, no. But they never took enough shows to Omaha. They did it a couple of times. It was wild when it happened. Mm. But, you know, it's all said and done now. So Sounds like you still might be in the Crawford sweepstakes a little well, bit. I'm sure he's expensive, but I would love to tell the story. That's all. Mm. Like, you know, whether I can provide the right finances for him. But I'd fucking promote the life out of him. He'd be a superstar if he was with me. Tell you, because I'd be telling that story to everybody. I know how affected you were when it was said that Anthony Joshua should retire mm. after his loss. Um, we've heard Stephen A. Smith the day after the fight say that um, Errol Spence should retire. I just don't understand. Like, you lose to the pound for pound number one, and you should retire. I don't understand. Like, on what basis? You got beat by Terence Crawford. Okay, now if you go again, you move up to 54 and you get beat by Brian Castano and you, you want to be at the top level, I think you have to look at retirement. If AJ loses on Saturday, I think he has to look at retirement. Do you mm. know what I mean? But when you're physically good, when you're enjoying the sport, when you're still motivated, why retire? Because you lose to the pound for pound number one. People are so quick to like jump on the back of it. I don't, I don't understand it. Now, mm. I think what Stephen A. Smith should say is, if Errol Spence doesn't look good next time out and doesn't win his fight in convincing fashion, he maybe should consider retirement. Not you should retire because you lost to Terence Crawford. Jesus, you know? Now, when Crawford knocked down Spence, every time he ran over to the side of the ring Again, and addressed Jarrell. Uh, more more and that further example of his personality. <laughs> Yeah, and it was exciting. And uh, Jermel Charlo sitting ringside had some choice words for him. It was a tough, tough week for uh, Jermel. Uh, what do you think about a 154 Crawford Charlo? A, assuming you know that he a, doesn't shock the world against straight, Canelo. Straightforward fight for Terence Crawford. Mm. You know, he can't be beaten at, 30, at, 40, at 47 and at, or at 54. And Charlo ain't good enough to beat Terence Crawford. He's inactive. He hasn't lived the right life, I don't think, compared to Terence Crawford. But he's got Canelo first, and that's going to be... You'll never see Charlo at 54 again. Do you give him a chance against Canelo? No. No, I mean, look, the argument is, is Canelo still the same fighter that he was two or three years ago? Maybe not. But he looks motivated to me. Um... Charlo's got to get the game plan with Derek spot on. Watch mm. the Dimitri Bivol fight, but he's not big enough to do that. That's the problem. Stand in trading spots and move and use your feet, frustrate him. But mm. the problem is when you're coming up two divisions, it's difficult to do that. When you're the division above and you've got the speed and the movement to do that, it's, a, it's an easier job. But I don't see Charlo being competitive against Canelo. But, but we'll see. it all depends where Canelo's at. Well, where will we know where Canelo will be at for the next three fights anyway? He'll be on maybe. a pe maybe not officially. I thought that was official. What do you no, mean? Who announced it? I read it. You read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you read it. <laughs> yeah. Did it come from the PBC? Well, Did it come from Canelo? No. No. Oh. But we'll see. I'm sure things can change, but it looks it looks that way. Yeah. If it happens that way, who are the next two fights? Whoever Canelo wants them to be. Who do you want them to Probably be? Probably. The next Charlo, if he ever finds his way back into the ring. And I don't know. Maybe it's a co-promotion between the winner of Belanger and Munguia. You know, I, think, I don't think so. I, I don't see that fight happening. Um, mm. Maybe. If it's big enough, I think I think maybe. And lastly, you mentioned Jamal Charlo. Yes. Uh, he had a tough night there yeah. in the week. Um, did you see him get Caleb slapped Plant, by yeah. Caleb Plant? Caleb Plant don't mess about, does he? He lets his hands go at every opportunity. I mean, he tried to slap Canelo. Mm -hmm. He slapped uh, Charlo around the chops. I'm not getting on the wrong side of Caleb Plant, that's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a strange one. Listen, I'm not, you know, I can't talk about what you would do or what you would expect someone to do, but mm. I was quite surprised by the tameness of the response, but Caleb Plant don't fuck about, does he?
clearly not. And you have, I think, made a little news with this uh, Canelo situation. I think most people assume that Canelo's three fights no, uh, with I'm not PBC. He's not, but I don't think it's ever been officially announced, and we don't know the, the status of that deal. But I'm, I'm but, sure it's true. But has um, it been officially signed? Is that like I don't, I have inked? no idea. I have no idea. But I don't think it's ever been officially announced. But I'm sure it's true. Mm. Um, but things can change. Opponents don't get agreed to. And like I said, our focus is to make Belanga against Mungia. And the winner of that is nailed on to fight Canelo Alvarez. And it could be on PBC. Who knows? All right. All right. Well, we'll find out. I'll see you out in the streets. Radio Raheem with Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn. Hearn. <laughs>